Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Please subscribe, leave a review, comment, share, and consider supporting the podcast on Patreon, even at the producer and sponsorship levels. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Jessica Hartung about her recent book, The Conscious Professional, Transform Your Life at Work. Jessica Hartung, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here. It is a pleasure to be with you. I'm super excited to have a nice conversation. We've been having a lot of fun chatting in the pre-interview, just getting to know each other a little bit. You're joining us from Boulder, Colorado. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And we were just talking about uh, Oregon and Astoria. And I grew up in Salem. And you've, you've been out there with your husband for work uh, for a while and just drove through Salt Lake City. Anyways, we're just catching up. It was we kind wave. of fun to do all of that <laughs> and wave from you know about eight hours away. Um, where you're at in Colorado. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing on your your recent book, The Conscious Professional, Transform Your Life at Work. And really, your, your expertise comes in the area of professional development. And that's what you do with your firm and, and all the cool stuff that you're doing, uh, which is framed out quite well in your book. So we're going to be exploring all things professional development, not just in relation to the book. And I'm super excited to have that conversation with you today. As we get started, I wanted to share Jessica's bio with everybody. Jessica Hartung expected to become a high school teacher, but instead became CEO of a leadership development firm. After 20 years, she authored The Conscious Professional, Transform Your Life at Work to help anyone turn their work into a learning laboratory. In 1998, Jessica founded Integrated Work, an innovative leadership development firm, and has led hundreds of retreats, powerful facilitated events, and coaching programs, and has real life in the trenches business experience as a conscious company CEO. Her views are grounded in industry research and walking the talk stories that inspire new strategies and build leadership capability every day. What a tremendous background. I love that you kind of found yourself backing into this area with, with the uh, initial intention of becoming a teacher. I actually, back in the day, that's kind of where my thinking was too. I, I'm like, High school would be awesome. I wanted to teach high school. And Holy, then, I was going to be a high school sociology teacher. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. And my PhD is in sociology. So there you go. Like we're, we have all these connection points. So I, I thought about high school and then I'm like, oh, public school teachers, I love them. They don't make very much money. And I'm not sure I can have the lifestyle for my family that I want. So I ended up continuing along the path of education and teaching, just doing, you know, training and development work within organizations and then becoming a university professor and teaching in that setting. Um, and like I said, I, I'm a sociology PhD, uh, ended up in a business school teaching organizational development, uh, organizational leadership and those types of things. Sounds like we have a lot in common in that. There regard. is. I'm, I'm, I'm laughing because my transition between I'm going down the path of an educator, I'm getting my, you know, in college, getting my uh, teaching certificate, and I had a conflict with one of my education professors. So this is a person who's been in the field for a long time. He is nearing retirement, and he is telling us things that don't seem to me to be what you should and what we needed. And so I can talk to him about that. He asked me not to come back to class. He said, you can take the tests, but don't come back to class. So I got a job at a startup and they're telemarketing. And I learned my way forward from there. And that's how I ended up, you know, eventually coming back to it through the leadership development, knowing how people can actually lift themselves up by learning where they are. Um, I had to, and, and it changed everything. 
Yeah. And sorry that you had that experience. That's not how university professors should act. <laughs> and and you, you should be you should be secure enough to allow. I mean, I want to foster an environment where students will challenge me and you know challenge a lot the thinking has in changed the room. in 20 yeah. years, 30 years. You know, a lot is different. And and you know, it's been characteristic of this whole journey as yeah. conscious professionals 25 years ago when we said this is how we'd like to play, they said you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I have direct and personal experience. We're going to incorporate emotions. This is really not just professional development. It's also personal development. No, you're doing it wrong. Mm. Um, so I've received a lot of feedback like that. <laughs> and I'm fortunate that um, it, I have a little bit of a defiance of that. You know, yeah, really? That's what you think? Well, let's just see. Why don't we experiment? And that's yeah. where I think really that defiance, you know, that has a little uh, uh, energy that's uh, related to, to what's coming at you. If, as long as you turn that back to say, okay, where was I focusing again? Let me get back on track with what I believe and what my inner wisdom is saying. Then those other folks who are saying that's not the right way, you know, you can, you can learn to mitigate that because they don't have your vision. Yeah. Yeah. And just because it worked, you know, for your, your professor back then, um, you know, doesn't mean that's how things, the world's going to be in the future. Right. And so we need right. visionaries. We need people to challenge the status quo. And frankly, you know, I don't know this, but I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if there was some gendered stuff going on there <laughs> that you experienced. I wouldn't be surprised either. <laughs> yeah, and I which... think it's certainly been a characteristic of, you know, how I approached having children and having a business and all that, of course, it's gendered too. Um, I think I have a very, um, a bias towards seeing things holistically. And that comes from, you know, whole, all of me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> including the, uh, you know, the gender. Yeah, for sure. So with that as a background, why don't you launch us into why you wrote the book and what you mean by it? the conscious professional. Yeah, I, I would be delighted to. I think that the time that I wrote this was about 20 years in, and I had been trying to write it for a while because what I've noticed is I have these one-on-one -on -one coaching conversations with people. And I was working with folks over many years. So watching them from the you know, first couple of jobs that they'd had into you know, senior director positions in uh, government, nonprofits, corporations, and then moving into the C-suite. And so watching that progression over people's um, whole careers, I really had a sense of how the conscious companies could support that. But most people don't work in a company where they're getting that kind of mentorship. And most people don't have someone who is helping to guide them in that way. The managers they have are so busy. And in fact, many of the companies, like many of the folks that I've encountered over the years, they, they don't get it yet. You know, like they're trying to, they're not in the game of having a mutually beneficial relationship between employer and employee. That was the game I was playing. How do we do, how do, we do that? How do we do that really well? And so I, I wanted to share the stories of folks' development because what I notice is in the conscious professional way of behaving, we're not just talking about our financial paycheck, that you have to look at the why of work. What is the purpose of work again? Is it to make money? Sure, of course it is, but that's just one part. So we call that the first paycheck. And the second paycheck is the sense of satisfaction you know, our emotional reward. And a lot of folks will take a lower first paycheck to get a higher second paycheck, right? But what we haven't been talking about is our third paycheck. And the third paycheck is the skills and development that you build over time, and they stay with you forever. But most folks aren't orienting to this. So they're starting in this job and they're like, you know, my manager doesn't know what they're doing. They don't spend time with me. My coworkers, this, all these things about what's going on around them. And I'm like, oh, great. What an excellent case study for your leadership. <laughs> you know, like this is going to be awesome. And that, that really is, is like a different way of seeing the same situation. We, as leadership development professionals, I've spent time in, in scenario planning where you bring people in and you have this you know, made up scenario where they have to role play. 
they may get something out of it, but boy, no, they don't like it. And it's not the same as the contextual richness of their environment, right? So why don't we use the contextual richness of their environment and turn their work into a learning laboratory? They have constant case studies coming up in front of them and they can choose, is this one I wanna take? Is this one I wanna step into? Or, or, well, how do I choose? And there you've just opened up that sense of where does meaning come from for you? Because when people are deliberately developing their own, you know, sort of learning case study leadership development from their work and, you know, Back in time when I was in telemarketing and I came over from an education, I mean, you know, business was not what I was oriented to. I grew up from a librarian and a scientist. And so I really didn't know how to play the game, right? So I arrive and I'm a telemarketer and my boss quits and the person above him doesn't know what to do. Same kind of situation that many people find themselves in today. They are in a position where they're actually going to need to learn and grow themselves and think about what they need to close the gaps and, and build their own leadership development, whether their ma manager or their organization is supporting that or not. And it's for yourself that you do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you just laid out some really important points there. And I like the, the focus on the three paychecks. Uh, and you're absolutely right. There's so much research that talks about how people want to be paid fairly equitably. They want to be valued by their organization. So you can't, you know, it, an organization can't get away with skimping on that and, and cheating people and exploiting people. Uh, but pay in and of itself just isn't it, right? It's not, it's not the, the long-term sustainable motivator uh, that's really going to tap into the potential of people. It's really those second two paychecks that you talked about. It's, it's the why of work. It's finding meaning and purpose in the work that you do. And it's the, the continual growth and development that people can experience, which by the way, also contributes to the why, right? It also contributes it to the purpose and the fulfillment that people we feel. Yeah. Exactly. And so, it, and, and that's what I see great leaders doing. Great leaders do the coaching and the mentoring um, and, and focus on the development of their team, looking for ways to strengthen their bench. So always yeah. thinking about how can I develop the next leader to be my replacement or to take the next senior leadership role in the organization. And they yes. may not stay on my team. They may go to another organization or another part of, of our current company. Um, but the mark of a great leader is really that, that, uh, tr that long-term lineage of, of uh, developing others around you. And we talk about this in other areas. Like we talk about it, for example, in sports, it's very common, for example, in football or basketball to talk about uh, the really where the coaches came from, who they uh, came up under, right? And so you'll talk about some of the great coaches. They were great coaches because their teams were successful, but they were great coaches because they created other great coaches who then went out right. and had success in their own right, in their own careers. Um, that's the same mentality that we need to have within our businesses, within our organizations. And, but unfortunately, you're absolutely right. So many leaders just get sucked into the daily grind. They're so busy. They don't really give that kind of focus or attention to developing their, their people that way. And so having a conscious leader, having a conscious organization, you know, we can't count on that. We have to take ownership over that for ourselves and make sure that we're fostering that in our own opportunities. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Academy courses, micro-credentials, and certificates to upskill and reskill for the future of work. All HCI Academy courses, micro-credentials, and certificates are designed, developed, and delivered by award-winning and internationally renowned scholars, educators, thought leaders, executives, and practitioners. Our courses, micro-credentials, and certificates will help you make your mark on the future of work and make an immediate impact in your organizations. Check out the HCI Academy and our many course offerings and certificates to upskill and reskill for the future of work. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us.
And, you know, one of the pieces that I, I just, I, I want to touch on is related to when we're growing other leaders, when we're creating that legacy of leadership that follows us, which is truly, some would say, the measure of your leadership. You know, you, you lead and then you go away and the organization or the team uh, can't thrive anymore. That's not a measure of great leadership, actually. That's a measure of you didn't build a, a sustainable system. So the one very practical, I love reading, I'm a geek for all this stuff, but the one very practical way that people can start is by growing themselves. Because when you show your grow, which is the part that most folks find very hard to do, they don't want to admit that I'm the one who's learning. You know, you're the one who's learning. Let me show you. And the first step that people can take is to start to actually track their own deliberate development and talk about it with the people that they want to inspire to grow. And this was a lesson for me. You know, I had a small team, 15 people were growing. And to me, this was an incredible development experience. I, I think uh, becoming a mom, becoming a CEO, uh, and, and few other items in my life has been as challenging. And so this is a time of great growth for me. I got outside support, I did a peer group, um, and I would show my team where I was growing. And that gave me credibility to then show them <laughs> how to grow. And uh, I had one gal who commented in a meeting, wow, I just watched you like a Pokemon transform, <laughs> you know? So I had, you know, started the meeting from one perspective. We had kind of planned. I had to work on my partnership. This person was really very aggravating. And, and I had to kind of come to my own way of dealing with it. And in the room after we got done, you know, it, it was like a celebration because I was growing in relationship to what the business needed me to become. And that is a conscious professional. When you are actually aware of what is it that the business needs you to become that you are willing to, that will enrich your life, that creates the kind of life that you want to lead in. Now, sometimes I did things at home that intersected with work and at work it intersected with home, but showing my grow in both ways, you know, I, I really noticed my kids said, you know, what's the most inspiring thing? Oh, watching dad go back to school. That was the most inspiring thing. So our, our ability to grow ourselves is an undertapped resource in our quest to develop those leaders around us. Yeah, yeah, I love it. It always starts with us and modeling for those around us when they can see it in us, we give them yeah. permission to do the same and they recognize the importance of it. And, you know, if I'm a mid-level manager on up, right, I'm managing people, chances are I'm managing people who are also managing people. And so I need to be able to show them um, that this is not only permissible and, ex and acceptable, but it's expected. Continuous right. learning, development, and growth is what we all need to be doing. I show that to them. They then show that to their team. It creates a dynamic culture of lifelong learning and a growth mindset within your business, which is what we want. If we want innovation and creativity and, you know, efficiencies, productivity, all, you know, all the good things that organizations say they want and they need. Um, so I'm curious if, if you could outline for us when you're coaching and working with uh, various executives or in various consulting engagements, what are some of the types of things uh, that you encourage people to do in terms of getting that real-time learning. Uh, clearly, the the kind of real life in the trenches, uh, real-time uh, case studies and work experience, you've already kind of mentioned that, and that's yeah. super important. And taking the time to reflect on what you're experiencing and, and unpacking all of that so you can really learn everything there is to learn from those experiences, um, maybe you can go deeper into that. And then also what other types of real time learning can we be a part of as we're trying to further develop ourselves? Excellent. Oh, you're queuing me up for some great questions. Thank you. What I really notice about the growth in the workplace is that unless there is a direction, you know, where is it headed? <laughs> we find ourselves just consuming, growing, learning lots of stuff, but it doesn't add up to something right? So we want it to add up to a, 
a, a career that's satisfying, that, that, that fulfills us, and that leverages our strengths and our contributions, that helps us create that legacy. So that has two parts. It has the part of what does the person want, as well as what are the needs of the organization. And what I realized is most folks don't have in their own mind uh, like a model, something that's simple that they're bringing around with them wherever they go, like, oh, I know how to think about this situation because I have a model for it. So I went through the smoking cessation research. I went through other research around how people make change transform from I used to be this and now I'm doing this in, in small micro ways. So these micro, what I call micro identity shifts are happening. But again, most folks don't have a model for it. So I wanted something super simple, awareness, willingness, skill like a little cycle goes around and round. We have a new level of awareness. Sometimes that comes because we're on a project that's not going well, or because there's someone like I mentioned who was aggravating, or, you know, sometimes awareness comes because a good friend says, you know, you don't seem to be yourself right now. You know, I'm, I'm hearing things out of your mouth that I'm not expecting, and it doesn't seem congruent. Now that's a big, whoa, <laughs> that's an awareness, right? So awareness can sometimes be hard because it requires us to see things in a new way. So the first um, area is just what do we see? Can we increase our perceptions? So now if we're aware, then what? Well, most people, when they start to do training and development, they start with skill building. Start with how do we build your skills? And that's a lovely thing, except we don't yet know if the person is willing and we don't know if it's really a good idea. So, you know, um, and, and, and when people aren't aware and you try to train them in skills, let me train you about communication skills and you're not aware that you need that training. That training is very ineffective and in fact, probably irritating, right? Because you're trying to train me on something I don't think I need. So awareness is important. I now say, oh, I do need it. But the next place is willingness. Does this actually connect to something that I'm willing to do? I have tried developing people who are not in a place of willingness, and I wouldn't recommend it. It's not, <laughs> it's not great for them. It's not great for you. So willingness gets into our personal motivation. What is meaningful to you? What are you directing and leading in your life and in your career? And those are, you know, for many people, uh, so inextricably connected that that's, I think, a part of the great resignation is managers and leaders don't know how to have these conversations about people's willingness. Well, you want this job or you don't. You know, there is no willingness inside of that. So when you understand this simple model of awareness, first the person, yourself or someone else has to be aware. Otherwise, nothing else is happening. Second, are we willing? Is this really a good idea? Out of the hundreds of things we should focus on, is this the right thing? So are we willing to invest in our time? Yes. Okay, great. Now we get to the skill building. <laughs> and this is where folks, you know, there's the real juice because you actually see the transformation. And you know what happens as you learn new skills? You're getting invited to different rooms. <sighs> And there's a whole new level of awareness, <laughs> right? So you see it just going round and round. So I think the very first thing that people can do is to start orienting towards their learning experiments. I, I recommend that people are running action learning experiments all the time. You know, if you're an entrepreneur, how else did you build your business? That's the way you do it, right? And that's how you build your leadership as well. And so these action learning experiments, you wanna run them through this model. Am I aware, willing, you know, building the skill? Oh, now what am I aware of that I wasn't before? Ah. So this is a way that people can coach and develop themselves. And while they're developing themselves, you know what happens is they start to develop those people around them because everybody's watching going, wow, I wanna play that game too. <laughs> and, um, and in fact, you're getting better at leading. And as you get better at leading, it's a lot more fun. Yeah, it is way more fun because what, what's the alternative? The alternative is you, you end up being one of those leaders who's running around like a chicken with their head cut off, putting out fires all day. And yeah. that's not fun for anybody. I don't think anyone really likes that. Um, and managing you know, their own insecurities. Like, exactly. you know, what's going on about that is I'm not sure if how so-and-so is going to think about me, you know, like, so what they're managing and what they're aware of is not the relevant bits. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So again, it all comes back to the start of awareness, because unless we have self, uh, you know, understanding of self and understanding of others and understanding of context, um, we're all part of these learning um, 
experiments as you, as you talked about it, you know, these, these, uh, what's the term you just used? Um, yeah, action learning experiment. Mm -hmm. Action learning experiments. When we're, we're engaged in these, we're all naturally engaged in them all the time. The difference is most people don't take the time to stop and think about what is actually happening <laughs> as they're going through these experiences. And so then it just becomes one more experience layered on top of another, you know, all the other experiences and, and you're never taking the time to really to dissect it, break it down and understand what's going on and why. I call that the growth grazer, you know, like mm, they're sort mm. of going through, oh, I'll take this and I'll take this, you know, and sort of grazing little snippets all along. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm probably uh, naturally inclined that way. But if you're trying to develop a career and develop your leadership, it doesn't add up unless you put it together with clarity of purpose. So when you have a clarity of purpose and you say, ah, I want to accomplish that. Now, how is this growth? going to feed into that? What can I become more aware of that's going to help me? Now that growth grazing tendency just makes you a powerhouse of yeah. learning, right? Yeah, perfect. Well, Jessica, I'm noting the time. I'm going to have to let you go here in just a few minutes. This has been a fascinating and super fun conversation. Um, but before we close for today, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Fabulous. Well, consciousprofessional.com and jessicahartung.com are the two places that I hang out online and my digital space. But LinkedIn is also one of my favorite places. I really appreciate the dialogue and the connection. Uh, lately, what I've been doing is doing implementation discussions of the book, actually going through with groups of 20 people and, and having them read the book and we discuss it together. Um, I can't even tell you, this has been the most fulfilling part of, uh, you know, this experience, uh, building a company, transferring that to another female entrepreneur, watching it succeed in my absence, very fulfilling. And now it gives me a chance to turn my attention to mentorship and to um, thinking partnership with executives. So that's the way I've been playing. And I would love to make sure that the reason, the purpose that's driving me to make this book, to promote the idea of learning in place is that there are so many outstanding capable leaders. I ended up going the entrepreneurial route because I didn't have a lot of other options open to me. Right now, there are, I don't even know, millions of people who are working for a manager who doesn't know how to lead them. And what I want to do is give people the tools so they can lead themselves, have fulfilling work experiences regardless of the kind of company they work for. And if they work for a company that has a conscious culture, they need to know how to play. And this will help them learn how to run their own development cycles and create a stronger third paycheck for themselves, which is going to be helpful wherever they uh, choose to go. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jessica. It's been a pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Jessica and her team can do for you. Check out the book, all the many great resources. Uh, this has just been so much fun. You're welcome back anytime and we can continue the conversation. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership, The Journey of Becoming a Truly Remarkable Leader. Early in my adult life, I learned about an Asian proverb that translates as bluer than indigo. If you think about the color indigo, it is a brilliant, deep, and vibrant blue, what some would call the bluest of blues. To have something that is bluer than indigo is rare and truly remarkable. Contrary to popular myth, there is no one-size-fits-all or cookie-cutter approach to effective leadership. There is no silver bullet, no secret sauce, no go-to model that will solve all of your problems. The truth is, great leaders have all had their unique strengths and flaws, and have all had to discover and then pave their own distinctive path in their life's journey to fulfill their leadership potential. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership will help you discover your own path and explore those ordinary, everyday actions that will help you respond to an uncertain future and produce extraordinary results for your individuals, teams, and organizations. Check out Human Capital Innovations magazine, Human Capital Leadership. 
Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine with the mission to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We publish issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Take a look at the latest issue and let us know what you think. The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership. Ordinary, everyday actions that produce extraordinary results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Please subscribe, leave a review, comment, share, and consider supporting the podcast on Patreon even at the producer and sponsorship levels. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.